Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and we are going through the uh, interlude between Season 1 and 2 of Games Revisited. As you noticed by the last episode, or the last 20 minutes if you're watching live, we're going through the Super Nintendo games. I did a string of time wasters, and now I am going to do some of the fun little... Um, Oh, what did I call them? The fighter games. All the fun little fighter games, starting with one of the ones that everybody thinks of all the time when you start thinking SNES fighter games. Big in the arcades. Widely known. Uh... It had a really cheesy movie come out in the, was it mid-90s? Yeah, I think it was mid-90s. I don't even want to think about that. Yes, I am talking about... Nope, that's next. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I realize now that uh, I, I, phrase, I phrase that that way because... Uh, yeah, 93 was a good year for the action action fighter bit. You know, Street Fighter 2 was out, Mortal Kombat was out, played both of them a lot at, uh, you know, various sleepovers and parties and things. And uh, there, there were a few other games that I traded around with friends, but, um, you know, Mortal Kombat was one of the really big ones, one of the two really big ones that came out. So, yeah. I remember when this looked like high-end graphics uh, floating around somewhere on YouTube. If you if you can really if you do some real searching, you can actually find the video footage of actors doing the motion capture for the different character movements, and they are in something pretty closely approximating the the costume of the characters and all that. And it is. Uh, it is something special to behold. I, I'll tell you that. All right. I've got to remember where I'm at time-wise. Because, again, I've got four games that I want to run through in this segment. And then I'll slow down the pace for the next two segments if you're watching live. <laughs> ah! Here I am trying to remember all the different button combos. I used to know these so well. Of course, it doesn't help that I've got a uh, slightly different button mapping. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was never good at these games, even when I was good at these games. <laughs> I did well as, as someone who didn't play too many of those. Oh, yeah, here we go. About to get my uh, scorpion handed to me. Nope, oh, maybe not. <laughs> yep, nope. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's a little closer to the way these matches went. Oop. Oh. Yeah. Hit the right button combos, not the ones for the controls. Ah, get over here. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I wish I was doing better. Yeah, I wish I could remember this better. But um the uh the the game itself is very unforgiving in, in the uh how shall we say it, the skill level expected. Um It'll be a surprise to no one that this was a, this game was originally supposed to be a uh, some sort of uh, adventure game around Jean Claude Van Damme, who was really hot back in the nineties. Come on! Raiden wins. <laughs> Oh, who was it that played Raiden in the cheesy movie? It was somebody that I, I would have expected to know better and do better. Um, 
Oh, it was uh, Highlander. Um, uh. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to think and fight at the same time. <laughs> Can't help but wonder if, um, yeah. Can't help but wonder if one of the combos is the left and right shoulder buttons together. Which would be typical, because that's the combo that I need to turn the game off. But yeah, one of the two really big uh, fighter games of the, the early 90s, the SNES, came out in 90... 90 which was it? Came out in 92... And spawned 11 sequels. Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> Christopher Lambert. Thank you. Oh, that was going to bother me for a while, too. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 came out April of this year. <laughs> Still going strong. All right, so... Let's back this up. Let's load content. Let's go to the other one that everybody thought I was going to talk about. Because when you talk uh, fighting fighting games with a strong arcade presence, 90s. Oh, Dropbox. Yes, NES. No, not Tekken. <laughs> All right, Street Fighter 2. All right, license my Nintendo, Capcom. And it's the same basic idea. It's just a straight up fighter. This was far more fun with friends than it was trying to fight the computer. But it's the same basic idea. Although, <laughs> interestingly enough, there, there were some, uh, I didn't realize it until I was looking up a few things uh, for for the for the games revisited bit, um, some of the names of different characters changed depending on. Oh, I forgot they auto selected. If you didn't hurry up and pick somebody, uh, some of the names depended on which region. Uh, so, like M Bison uh, had a different name depending on which region which uh, game you're talking about oh, come on that works all right um of course street fighter 2 was a little bit more of the 2d rendered graphics than mortal kombat was um still a lot of fun still a lot of fighting Ooh. Oh. If you remember Guile, then you'll know that uh, magician and performer Brian Brushwood, when he was doing his college magic comedy tours, he styled his hair after Guile. So he had the, the tall, blonde, spiky hair as he, uh, how shall I put it uh, kindly, a as he moved out of the college touring scene, he uh, finally eventually switched to... Uh, to a, a more traditional hairstyle, shall we say. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Of course. Getting back into the, uh, getting back into the hang of things. Except I want somebody different. Let's go with Guile. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so Brian Brushwood had that spiky, spiky blonde hair thing going. <laughs> Come on, man. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm the only one who's supposed to spawn this or spam the same move. Come on now. That's not how this works. I, I keep trying to do the same uh, controller moves, but I, I remember I forgot that uh, the SNES controller had the buttons mapped a little differently than uh, than this does. The A and B are backwards, as are the X and Y. Not that that really. I mean, it sounds like a good excuse, but I, I'd be lying if I said that's why I was sucking right now. <laughs> It's too early to be defeated. No, it's never too early to be defeated. <laughs> okay. Now, these next two games. Now, this is actually one that I'm definitely going to want to go ahead and change what shows up on Twitch, if it will let me. Because um, I am going to play the SNES port real quick. But I did not actually get started with the SNES port. Uh, my introduction to this game... Oh, it's not on the list. Okay. Load content. The, the users. See users run. Run users run. Dropbox. Yeah, Dropbox. If you want me to keep using your thing, uh, you know, throw a little sponsorship my way. I'll make sure to drop that name all the time. <laughs> all right, the great granddaddy of first-person shooters, Wolfenstein 3D. It fit on a single floppy. <laughs> and again, we're talking early 90s, 90, 93-ish thereabouts. With the infamous John Romero and John Carmack, the uh, the geniuses and masterminds behind ID Software. Although honestly, I always called it ID Software because I thought this was that whole ID Ego Super Ego thing, but apparently it wasn't. It, it was um, in uh, it was something else. All right, let's start the game. Yeah, so I always played the PC version of this. I never actually played the console edition. Oh. Yeah, th this was before elevating your gun was an option. You, you had a very generous auto-aim. <laughs> you could turn left and right, and that was about it. You had use and shoot. Uh, these sounds were far better than what was available on the PC. Although the graphics on the PC were far better than what you're getting here. Um, there, yeah, this was another one of those games that I spent a lot, a lot of time playing. But this is where, this is where I started making the transition from... Uh, from console gaming to PC. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you see what happens to soldiers who don't attend to their health? They get shot. They also find health and a big honking gun. Um, ooh, how do you switch guns? I'm used to using the number key. All right. Sorry, looks like it has it selected, and that's all that matters, all right? So you're seeing the beginnings of, of inattentiveness <laughs> and getting a shot for said inattentiveness. Ah, there we go. Health, health and ammo. Oh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the high-end PC art. Was that cluster of pixels an actual person or not? Sorry, no grenades, no massive amounts of uh, of ammo unless you remembered all your cheat codes. <laughs> and on the PC end of things, that's where that's where cheat codes actually got started. They were little development shortcuts, so that developers could test out all the weapons. They'd have a code that would give them all the weapons. And uh, it started by getting left in production. And then it kind of became a thing that just got left in production because and left as an exercise to the, the gamer to, uh, to play. But anyway, let's go ahead and close this one because there is one other one that got its start in 93. Because Wolfenstein 3D, that was uh, that was earlier. That that first came out in '92. You can still find some of the DOS ports around, and the nice thing about it is, um, it was one of the early shareware options where you could actually get like the first couple levels free, and then you mailed in a check, and they mailed you a floppy disk with all the other levels. And, and yeah, it was a, uh, it was a fun game. And oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Oh yeah. <laughs> and previous to uh, previous to ID releasing Wolfenstein in '92, they released Commander Keen, which was another one of the early shareware games that you you had all sorts of fun playing. But with that. Uh, Wolfenstein was the great granddaddy of all first person shooters. This was the one that really hit it home and, and made uh, first person shooters absolutely huge. We're going to head back over here. And again, I, I always played the PC version of this. I'm going to show you the console version. And that would be Doom, the original. It's been through reboots and re-releases and sequels and, and um, it, it's actually become a bit of a game to see what you can port Doom to. Like, like there, there are people who are porting Doom for their smart microwave and trying to run Doom on the computer that runs their smart microwave. And, and using the the number keys to to move and shoot and all that kind of stuff all right so let's start a new game and this is uh yeah th this is where things really hit their hit their stride in the first person shooter market yeah you pick up little health potions and all that good fun stuff different guns it had uh a, we'll call it a unique soundtrack. It was the first to actually start incorporating some of the uh, I guess the only way to describe it would be disturbing music. Because some of these levels are really truly disturbing. This is not the game you necessarily want to have uh, kids of a certain age <laughs> playing. Here we go. There we go. That's the button I'm looking for. Oh no. And I, I kind of like that much like Wolfenstein. I don't know if you noticed, but the little face down below starts changing as your health. It's, you start looking a little more beat up. You start looking a little more uh, frazzled. Unlike Wolfenstein, you actually had uh, armor, which would help soften up the blows a little bit. Oop. Come on. There we go. 
doesn't help that uh, the button mappings are uh, enough through that little disturbing run and again much, <laughs> a lot of time was spent playing uh doom way back when it was it was huge for a game back in the day and uh it took up three whole floppy disks you actually had to remember how to use pk zip and pk unzip to actually play the game swap out floppy two when you got to a certain point in the single player campaign it was a part of the early phase of LAN parties when people would bring their physical computers and get together. You see kids, back in the day, if you wanted to play multiplayer PC games with your friends, you had to be in the same physical locality. You had to actually get everybody together, hook up to the same wired network, and then learn all sorts of stuff about TCP IP and ports and things. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, on that depressingly, uh, on that note that makes me feel so, so very old. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call this one. Which to Okay. I forgot to do this on the last go around, so I will remember to do this one. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for joining along. A new episode will be out tomorrow. Assuming you're watching this when it's released. Do you want to know when these get released? Then subscribe and you'll get a notification every time a new video comes up. Hit the like button below if you are enjoying what's going on. If you want to see the whole series as it goes, instead of waiting day by day for each new segment to come up, watch live on twitch.tv or mixer.com. There are links in the description below that will take you to the live channels. I simulcast to both of them. And if you are watching live and you miss part of this, some of this, all of this, or... You just want to watch a particular segment again, there's a link to the YouTube channel down below in the description. And uh, wherever you watch, wherever you enjoy, please make sure you subscribe, like, follow, uh, whatever the nomenclature is for that particular venue. So that way you'll know when new things are happening. With that, I am going to, uh, for the YouTube people... That's going to be the end of the video after this cut. For the people watching live, hang tight. I'm getting ready to queue up the next game. So hang on. <laughs>